What's going on guys? Biker Dave here with a new toy. Uh, this is a Predator 3500 portable generator slash inverter. Very handy to have. These are these are quite inexpensive actually. And I know some people say, oh you got you know the El Cheapo model. Uh, if you do a lot of reviews, you know, searching about this model, they are very reliable, believe it or not. Uh, we're going to set it up for the first time here. It has a little 212 cc four-stroke engine, and looking at the uh, little manual that comes with it, uh, it comes with no fluids in it from the factory. So you have to fill it with 20 ounces of 10W30 oil. Uh, it also holds 2.6 gallons of four-stroke fuel. You know we'll use non-ethanol fuel, and we'll also put fuel stabilizer in it like this which is also what they recommend but we do that with any uh, four-stroke engine or two-stroke for that matter we always put fuel stabilizer in it and non-ethanol type of fuel uh, it helps out a great deal pretty handy little item this guy is uh, horizontal single cylinder overhead valve air cooled engine uh, re it requires you know, at least 87 octane fuel uh, can run at least 11 hours on 25% load, uh, only 57 decibels at uh, you know 23 feet of, 23 feet away at 25% load, so it's quite quiet and uh, not bad. Excited to have something like this because you never know when you might need it. So anyway, let's put our 20 ounces of 10W30 oil. It even comes with a little funnel. Uh, the little door comes right off here by hand with no tools needed. So let's fill her up here. I've been wanting a generator like this for many years actually. And I got it as a Christmas gift. So that's pretty awesome, right? Pour in the oil a little, you know, kind of slowly. Also, a, a little item like this called a ratio right, priceless little item for uh, pouring oils or fluids because it's got you know all kinds of uh, scales on the side to tell you exactly how much you're putting in and it's good for doing premix oil as well it tells you what ratio and how much uh, premix oil if you're going to use it for that but we're just using it as a uh, measuring device for this particular use <clears throat> pretty cool it comes with its own little funnel And it come, you know, of course it has its own little dipstick in it right there. So we're gonna run the engine first though and let it circulate. Then we'll check the uh, the oil level. See if I can get her in there. All right, we're just gonna put a little fuel in it here. We already have this mixed with stabilizer. Highly recommend that for any kind of engine like this or a lawnmower or something that you don't use all that often or in the off season or whatever. It's always good to use non-ethanol fuel as well as stabilizer in it. It helps the fuel keep longer so that it doesn't cause problems as far as storage of the vehicle. Put the cap on there. Some other cool things about this, this guy is got little wheel locks on the bottom, keep it from rolling around. It has electric start as well as pull start, little pull starter on the side, all kinds of different 
outlets, including, you know, for a RV style of outlet. You could even connect two of these together if you wanted to, you know, to run even more powerful devices. So pretty awesome. Let's see if she'll fire up. Alrighty, and our trusty little starter guide right here. We'll turn this to the uh, start button here. We'll turn the economy switch to the off position, which is right that way. Then you push and hold the start button for up to three seconds or use the uh, pull start on the side. We'll see if it'll, it's supposed to have a, you know, electric start. So let's see what happens. Let's fire it up with a pull start. Probably needs to be ridden, driven or used some before that battery can begin. Just like that. Once it fires, you turn it to the run position, and off she goes. So it obviously has its own choke mechanism when you turn it to the uh, start, to the start area right there. Pretty quiet though, listen to that. Uh, you know, a little fuel gauge right there. position it'll idle down when power is not needed as much and then when power is required by your device that you're connected to it will pick up RPMs automatically for you so that'll keep the noise down and help you save fuel and that sort of thing so pretty cool I like it Run for a couple of minutes, so let's shut her down. Now let's see here. Be sweet. Let's check the oil now. Wipe her off and just stick her in there. Pull her back out. It's right in the middle of the dipstick. And then we can just put the cover back on. Oil filler cover. Like so. 
Okay, of course I didn't you know, read the instructions thoroughly enough, but the battery access is right behind this little door. Like so, and then there is a battery back behind there that I'm sure needs to be connected for the electric start to work properly. So it has a nice little strap. Little strap system right there. Pretty lightweight little battery. Of course, it's not connected yet, which is why the electric start didn't work, so that's my fault, whatever. So you have to connect that little battery right there, and that'll allow the electric start to work. So let's do that. All right, it's got the, uh, a couple little rubber caps that you just take off the battery right there. It is already filled. Positive on the left, negative on the right. Comes with its own little set of hardware also. Little set of hardware it comes with, the nuts, washers, lock washers, little screws also. Pretty self-explanatory how to install that, just like any motorcycle battery. So these little square nuts right here will go in, just slide them in down below. like so then we'll just put a flat washer and then a lock washer one for each like so flat washer and a lock washer Okay, and the slider close. The red goes on the positive. Right there. Uh, it'll need a little Phillips head screwdriver to tighten these down. Okay, Phillips head. Tighten it nice and firm. Then with the black grounded negative one, same. Same ordeal. And move these little boots back down. Slide the little rubber little rubber holder. Push the battery back in place. Very easy to do. Excuse me if I'm blocking you. There we go. Like so. Put your little battery door back on, which could be a Phillips head or a, a little flat head. It'll, it'll take both as little hooks. Put it right in there.
Tighten her down. Now we have battery operated starting. Turn it to run. ESC throttle off. And just hold the starter button up. Then turn it to run. Just like that. Nice. Very nice. It helps to read the instructions, of course. Which it comes with. Nice set of instructions and parts diagram and spare parts and things it comes with. Alright. Here's what it comes with. Comes with everything, basically. Comes with extra uh, little options it comes with so you could charge a battery or connect this directly to, to a battery to charge it up with this guy comes with a spark plug wrench its own little screwdriver of course phillips head and flathead all in one uh, an rv 30 amp twist lock adapter pretty awesome even a little bag to put all your stuff in so yeah, not bad at all. So yeah, not bad. This is the, uh, the Predator 3500 peak watt generator. And um, quite inexpensive, but if you just take care of it, you know, and service it, uh, change the oil on it, it tells you about, uh, you know, how many hours to go through. It, tell, it walks you through everything in this little manual here. Make sure that you store, uh, you know, treated fuel that is non-ethanol. You know, take care of the thing. You definitely don't want to leave bad or stale fuel in it. Nice little diagrams, tells you how to do anything. Everything, it's got an air filter also. Shows you how to access everything. Oil drain plug on the side. On that side right there so you'll take this cover off to access the oil drain and the air filter and the spark plug is all on this side of the unit very easy to get to so yeah not bad you know we, we don't need those often here but I've had a few times where we've either had power outage and the only way I was able to run internet here was to plug in an inverter to my car's cigarette lighter. You know, so it worked, but you, know, you couldn't run much else in the house if you needed to. Where something like this could run just about everything you need in the house. Or if you're going to go camping, you know, or RVing or the racetrack or something like that. You could use this guy and uh, live comfortably out and about pretty sweet yeah very nice all right cool anyway uh, check out other videos with all kinds of cool stuff on our channel that you might like and um, but yeah pretty awesome with this let's fire it up one last time already been run you don't have to put it all the way to start because that's the choke mechanism basically so if it's already warmed up just put it to the run setting on your start switch here so the start over all the way over is basically its choke mechanism that's not necessary if the engine's already warmed up there you go sweet all right that's it. Y'all have a great afternoon. Biker Dave signing off. Make sure you Google Horsepower House and look through our channel for all kinds of cool stuff. Y'all have a great day.